new curriculum and uh, to just see if actually the, the current progression approach is fit for purpose. And when we did that, we actually felt that it wasn't for a number of different reasons, which we'll we'll go into. So what we're trying to do for our for our progression strategy, the new progression strategy for STP is to make it lighter touch. But in making it lighter touch, that enables us to make it more frequent, which means that we can be in contact with you and we can work with you if you're having any issues in terms of progress or completion, that we can work with you earlier to try and help you resolve any of those issues if, you, if you're experiencing any. We want to make sure it's aligned with the new curriculum, and that's really important. Um, so we've worked very carefully to just make sure that that the targets that we're going to be setting are achievable and that they fit within the design of the curriculum. It is going to be more data driven. The current process very much relies on trainees and training officers filling in uh, digital questionnaires. Actually, what we're going to do is hopefully make it uh, slightly less burdensome on your behalf by making it more data driven and we'll explain how that's going to work. We're going to be looking at reporting by exception. So again, so instead of filling in long questionnaires, both trainees and training officers, we're actually going to say, do you know what, if everything's OK, that's great. You don't need to tell us. But if you are having a problem, then you can let us know through a reporting by exception route. We want to encourage trainees to drive their progression. So really think about what is it I should be doing? When should I be doing it? And we're going to support trainees with a lot of communications and guidance around when you should be anticipating you should be doing various different things with your training. We do want to give definitive targets, so very much like the university provide definitive targets for activities that you're doing with them. We also want to make sure from a work based perspective that, that you're also working towards targets and really that's about making sure that you are uh, managing the workload and balancing the workload effectively and that you're not end loading a lot of the work based activities, which can cause a lot of stress towards the end of the programme. We appreciate it's a really busy programme, so we've tried to balance the uh, progression targets to make that easier to manage. We, we, we want to make sure we provide support in a, in a timely manner. Sorry, I can just hear somebody. If you could just mute your microphones, if that's all right, just so I can carry on. Thank you. Uh, so we want to provide support in a timely manner, and we can do that if we make it look lighter touch and more frequent. Um, this is really about supporting trainees to be uh, ready to complete and be able to complete everything on time. So what does the model look like? And this is going to apply to trainees starting in September this year and then for training cohorts going forward. So this is really a, a model of the curriculum. And as you can see, the curriculum is uh, in phases. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is in the first six months of the training program, we're going to do what we call a six month check in. And that doesn't have any targets against it. That's more about a sense check to see how you're getting on, if there are any issues and how we can support you with those issues. There then will be a uh, review of progress against set targets at the end of year one. So for trainees starting in September 2023, we'll be looking at the end of September 2024 for that review to start taking place. And then we're going to run a second review of progress at the end of year two. So that will be at the end of September 2025. And then in year three, as all trainees do, you'll be going through your final assessment in year three. But we're just focusing on the progression side of things today. So we talked about six month check in. So what's that actually mean? So this is this is a communications exercise. So this is about us just sense checking that you've got all the things in place that you should do. Things like training plan that you have regular supervision. We say that at least once a month. Um, is, is what we would say would be good practice with your training officer, that you are being treated as supernumerary, so you're not being put on rotors, so that you are your time is being protected for training, um, that you've had your local induction, your trust induction, um, that you've got support for your health and well-being, that you are actively engaging with one file, so you've logged in and you're starting to, to undertake some activities in the system, and that you are aware of what the progression requirements will be for the end of year one. 
It will be an opportunity to raise concerns. So we'll be emailing you and your training officer, checking everything's OK. But if it isn't, that's an opportunity for you to let us know if you've got any problems. I would say we're going to use the raise concerns process throughout the progression reviews. But I want to emphasise that you shouldn't necessarily wait until we're doing something around progression to come and tell us if there's an issue. So please don't feel that you have to wait until that point to let us know if, there are, if, if there's a, a barrier. What we will also do is we'll do a, a, a back end kind of desktop review just to have a look and make sure everybody's engaging with one file and they seem to be progressing OK. For anybody where progress is very low, then we may get in touch just to check everything's OK. But this is a communications exercise. It's not a target driven exercise for you. OK, so what are we going to actually ask of you in your review process? So in year one, what we're asking you to have completed by the end of September 2024 is what we call the phase one activities within the curriculum. So for year one, that is all four rotations or three rotations if you've got three in your curriculum. So it's up to 100 percent of all of the modules that are identified as rotations within the curriculum. And when we say 100 percent, that is uh, works on in one file, submitted in one file for assessment and signed off as satisfactory in one file. And then similar to year one, we're then going to be looking at uh, one file progress, but this time we're looking at your phase two activities. And within your phase two activities, you will have specialist modules, you'll have a research module, and throughout your programme, you've also got core modules and the core module we'll be looking at is the professional foundations of healthcare and clinical science. And by the end of year two, we're hopeful that you'll have been able to have completed 50 percent of that module, which leaves you 50 percent in year three. And how will we do that? Well, you won't need to do anything uh, from from your perspective. We will draw all that data uh, from one file and we'll use that data to make an assessment of your progress. So that's the first part is the is data from one file. The second part, and this is something that is not currently uh, required in terms of review of progress, but we are introducing this uh, in terms of a requirement between trainee and training officer to use the review meeting uh, functionality, which already exists in one file, to record an end of year review meeting. So that's just making sure that you both get together, that you have a conversation, that you see if there are any barriers, if there are any issues, and so that you can seek to kind of manage those and mitigate any issues that you might be experiencing. And we will be able to draw down whether that activity has happened or not. So it's still a data driven process. Have you done that review meeting at the end of year one? Have you done a review meeting at the end of year two? And then we'll be able to see if that activity has happened. That doesn't, of course, stop you from using that, that functionality at any other time. It's really, really useful functionality, but we're not going to go have time to go into the detail today. But we would encourage you to look at that if you haven't already. But it's a good way of planning and managing your training and being able to talk to your training officer about how you're getting on. So that is a, a requirement of the uh, review of progression. That's both for year one and year two. Where we're talking about reporting by exception. So this is standard already within progression reviews is that we talk to your universities and we ask your universities to let us know if there are any concerns in terms of your progress, which could relate to all those things that are on screen around attendance, conduct, progress, if you failed any exams or any assignments. And we really only need to know if the university feels that there's a, a risk to your ability to, can, to be able to progress in the programme or continue on the programme. So it's reporting by exception. So for those of you where you've got no issues, we wouldn't expect to have any data from the university. And in a similar vein, and this is what's different to our current progression reviews, is it's workplace activity. So have you as a trainee or have you as a training officer got any concerns that are likely to impact on your ability to either meet the targets or to um, progress on the programme. And if there are no issues or there were issues and you've been able to resolve them, that's fantastic. But you don't need to report it a part of that process. So it is about reporting by exception. So we're taking away that need to fill for everybody to have to fill a form in. We're asking only those of you who've got concerns and need support from us to let us know if there's issues. 
So what will happen once we've got all that information together? So what we will do is we'll take that information, we'll look at the, the data, we'll see if any issues have been raised either by yourselves as trainees or training officers or by the university. And then we'll look at that and we'll make a, a, a judgment as to whether we think you're, you're where you need to be in terms of the programme. And there's kind of three potential outcomes from that process. So you could either have met all of the objectives and that, and there's no issues being raised either from, from yourselves or the university. OK, great. You will got, just go on and proceed to the next year. If you've met most objectives and maybe some minor issues have been raised, we will look at that and we'll just make a judgment as to how concerned are we about those. If it's just very minor or there's a plan in place to address it, that's absolutely fine. And what we would say to you is that you and your training officer work together to kind of address that shortfall and deal with that. So you would deal with it at a local level. If, however, you're having some real challenges around your progress and you've really not been able to um, meet the, the, the targets that we're setting or there's something happening for you from a personal perspective or from a training delivery perspective that could be impacting on you, then we might assess that as, as wanting to come and talk to you um, about those issues and seeing how we can help you. And this process isn't just about setting targets. This process is about supporting you to be able to progress in your training. So if you do, if you are contacted with an outcome that says, no, we want to talk to you, I really don't want trainees to worry about that. You should not be worried that, you know, that suddenly that's the end of the road. That's it. You're off the programme. That's absolutely not the situation. Meeting with the school is all about us exploring those issues in more detail and to see how we can help you. We have really good networks, both with the university, with professional bodies, with um, other regions, with uh, trainee networks. There's all sorts of kind of things that we can come up with that might help you in terms of alleviate some of those issues. And we can work with you to develop an action plan, set some objectives with agreed timescales. And we really want to just make sure that we identify what the issues are, we come up with some solutions, and then we can follow up with you to see how you're getting on. It's all about making sure we can try and support you to be successful. So how might you prepare for review of progress? So it's really important that you make sure you understand what is required of you in this programme and that you talk to your training officer regularly about how you're progressing and about if you've got any barriers and how those barriers might be uh, resolved. We'd always say to you, try and manage these issues locally because often local solutions are, are often more rapid uh, and often there's, there's people, other people within your trust or organisation who might have experienced similar and can give you some advice as to how to manage that. However, if kind of you've, you've explored those avenues and it's still not um, helping you, then that's the time when you can raise a concern with the school. Make sure you complete a review meeting on one file. That's the one thing that we ask you to make sure you're actively doing as part of this process is undertaking that review meeting with your training officer. Make sure you're regularly updating your training plan. You keep reviewing, undertaking gap analysis, making sure you understand where the gaps are and, and coming up with a plan with your training officer about how you can address those, those gaps. Please make sure you read the guidance that we send you. We spend a lot of time trying to make sure that it's as, uh, as helpful and useful as possible. And it's really important. There's really lots of information in there that will be helpful to your training. So try to make sure that you do read it when we send it out. And we will be sending information out in lots of different ways. In particular, there'll be emails coming to you about details, all about this process, where you can get support, where all the guidance is. It'll all be on the website. There'll be information in our monthly memos, so make sure you do read those. Um, and then if we do need to send something specific to you, then we will email you. So just make sure that we've got your up-to-date contact information, or if your training officer changes and we need to talk to your training officer, if anything like that happens, make sure the school is aware because otherwise you might miss some really important communications. And as I've said, there will be a, a more formal process within the progression uh, strategy, but it doesn't stop you raising a concern at any other time. Just a quick review of uh, the, the process. So when are we gonna review your progression? We're gonna review it at the end of year one and at the end of year two. And how are we going to do that? So we're going to look at the data on one file, and that doesn't require you to do anything actively other than continuously update your portfolio. You do need to complete a review meeting on one file, and that's very straightforward, and there's guidance uh, going to be available uh, for you to do that. 
Uh, we will be looking at data if available from the university if there are any concerns raised and similarly for the workplace whether yourselves as trainees or as training officers uh, want to raise a concern or you've identified something that's really impacting on your ability to progress then that's the route to let us know. And what do we expect of you as trainees? So we want you to be proactive. We want you to identify issues and, and raise them early. So don't sit on them if they're really affecting your ability to progress. Talk to your training officer and try to resolve them locally. Please take responsibility for your own progress. This is your training programme. So if, if you do need to make sure that you're being organised, that you're planning, that you're reviewing and adapting to your training. And you may need to have some level of flexibility Although things can be planned for you, you know, or you don't know what's going to happen in terms of service requirements. So plans may change, but take the opportunities as they arise. Communication is key. Make sure you're communicating regularly with your training officers, your trainers, your assessors and any other, any other educators such as your university programme leads. It's obvious, but be professional and considerate in your communications and the way you interact with other colleagues. Make sure you understand what is expected of you, really important. So become familiar with the requirements of the programme. And if you're ever unsure, just drop us a line and we'll be happy to help uh, and explain. And please be honest when you're finding things difficult. It's, it's much harder to support you if you've been struggling with something for a long time and it's become more um, entrenched and it's, it, it's much easier if we can try and help you earlier on and then you can move on and carry on with your training. And just be ready for what's coming next. So just make sure you understand what's required of you. And that should put you in the best place to be successful. So I think we can take some questions now. I will take off the presentation shortly. I'll just give you another moment to grab that code. And then we'll go into the question section. Louise, I've Hello. just... I've, st I've now started to share the Slido and I wonder if actually I could have, there's about four questions about communication in there that I could probably do super quickly yep. um, while we wait for other questions to come in. Um, will the recording be available on the, the website for colleagues who are unavailable? Yes. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, there's one about communication. Given this release, trainings have already started this year. How are these changes going to be communicated? <clears throat> We've already done a lot of this. Um, training officers and trainees who are affected have already been invited to webinars. Those webinars were recorded. They've been published on the school website um, for all of the assessment changes. Anytime there's anything new on a school website, we will send a direct email to every trainee affected and to every training officer affected. We've already done that for the work-based assessment standards and we will put them in the monthly memo. So in fact, if you look at this week, this week's monthly memo, you already see you as pointing to pages on the school website. So there's always there's always going to be direct emails plus monthly memo plus information on the school website, plus webinars, plus webinar recordings. We will be comprehensive. We will not people will not miss this and um, because we will take a multi channel approach. Um, Louise, I'm going to do two more <laughs> because it's quick. Who should complete the review meeting tool on one file? The reason I'll answer it is because it's important to say the review meeting tool can only be initiated by the training officer. So um, we will do some fresh videos about this. We've already integrated this into Train the Trainer. We ran a train. We, tra we ran a, uh, a webinar for new STP training officers yesterday and, and walked them through it. Um, we'll do some new guidance videos again when they happen. You'll get direct emails, but the review meeting tool can only be initiated by the uh, training officer. So that's the answer to that question. And then that leaves us with two. There's a, a few more coming in. I'll, I'll moderate them in, in a second. Um, in fact, if I bring this one in, Louise, which is the, the who it's applying to, we can probably handle those two. Do you want to, to handle those? Um, Louise, you're on mute. Sorry, I thought I pressed the button. It obviously didn't work. Um, yes, so who does it apply to? So the trainees that started this September, September 2023, will have will go through this process of progression. For those who started in 2022, they are going to have the final midterm review of progression, which will start in January, February. And those communications will be going out very shortly 
uh, and we have made sure that those trainees are aware that that's their process. So that was included in their induction when they started last year. Um, we've got that information on the website. So they they will be the last group who go through the midterm review of progression and then everybody else, new cohort this year, any future cohorts will be going through the new progression strategy. Okay. Um, Louise, we've had a few versions. I've only pushed one over because it's been asked multiple times. But this idea of um, is there any flexibility in the system? Because for a range of reasons, people are, are telling us that they have to do parts of phase two and three and three and two. Do, do you want to handle that one? Yes, yeah, so we we have through this process and we have uh, spent some time working with um, uh, professional colleagues to just kind of sense check the strategy. And um, this has come up um, in terms of the order in which things are being delivered. What we've said is that for the majority of trainees, it should be delivered as it is in the curriculum. But we appreciate there may be some slight differences depending on where you're training. Um, that let us know through the um, raising a concern. We want to know actually how much that's impacting on people. This is a new strategy. Um, so we expect to evaluate it and review it and, and see how it's working. So that's going to be value in, valuable information for us, but we will take a pragmatic view. We're not going to penalise trainees as a part of this process, as a result of their training not being delivered in the same order that we would normally expect it to be. So be reassured we are mindful of it and there will be a route through to you letting us know if that's happening to you in your training. Um. Louise, I think there's probably two I could knock off if you like. Yeah, uh, will, there be, will there be a train the trainer refresher course? There will be fresh resources um, that we publish on the website, and it's highly likely that we will run further and longer webinars than those we are running today, so that both the technical side of it and the kind of process side of it is covered. Bear in mind, this is this is something that we don't execute until um, almost 12 months time. So um, you. There is plenty of time for us to prepare and to communicate with you. But as we get closer to the event, there will be uh, resor fresh resources for trainers. We've already got some plan that we will publish. Um, maybe I'll handle the one file one, Louise. The one, the progress will will we'll look at actual um, actual progress, and we and we fully appreciate that sometimes trainees are waiting quite a long time for rotation work to be reviewed. The design of the new curriculum is such that. Um, rotational modules, uh, uh, sorry, submissions against competencies or training activities in rotational modules are not uh, wholly dependent on them being signed off by rotational supervisors because actually it's much more about reflection than about mastery of technical skills from the rotational um, module. But uh, the, the, the quick answer to that question is actual progress. I'll pass you to the other one, Louise, where I'll bring yeah, um, sure. okay. these in. Right, so what we've looked at today is the phase one and the phase two parts of your curriculum. The phase three elements is your final year, will happen in your final year, and they will be picked up through the assessment process that will happen kind of in the summertime. Um, so the actual kind of formal review as a pro of progress are only going to happen for your year one and your year two activities, which is why we didn't put in your year three. There is work happening and there will be information coming out from the school about what your assessment will look like in your third year, but we're just focused on your year two and year three activities from a progression point of view. OK, um, sorry, Louise. Um, yeah. That and was... if Emma wants to jump in at any point, then please do add Emma. <laughs> right, so what's the reason for deciding to specify 100% phase two? Because that's the way your curriculum is designed. So we, the way the curriculum designed is that you do phase one and then you build on your phase one activities through your specialist activities. So there is an expectation because of the way the curriculum has been designed that you will be in a position to have done your phase two activities by the end of year two. So if you haven't done that, then you're not putting yourself in the best place to to be able to complete year three. This is what we're trying to avoid is trainees end loading their final year where they they have got loads and loads of work to do on one file. And actually that becomes really, really stressful. So this is about supporting you and giving you a framework 
to, to, to make more steady progress and to do that as you're being supported in terms of the way that, you, that you're receiving the training as part of the way the curricula has been designed. Louise, can I answer that top one about well, um, communication? Um, quite, yeah, the, we've got a series of explainer webinars. This one happens to be about progression. This progression strategy, as Louise has made clear, doesn't apply to current second years. However, the, uh, some of the, the future explainer webinars are about the work-based assessment standards, some of which do apply to second years as we have communicated to them. And that was why in this, in the monthly memo, uh, there was just this, a generic link to the series um, for second years. And if that's created some uh, lack of clarity, we apologise. But where we have been clear, and it's on the website, and we've communicated this directly and linked to it from monthly memo and in, in emails is about which um, assessment changes apply to which cohort. We've linked to that via the monthly memo and in direct emails. So some of the future explainer webinars will be relevant to second year trainees. OK, uh, do we have to raise a concern per trainee for doing phase three before phase two? Uh, yes, I think the mechanism will require you to do that. Uh, I get that a lot of training centres have a number of trainees, but the process that we're going to design is that it will be a form available to you on the website and you um, fill that in and send that to us per trainee if you can. The research module to be completed in year two, presuming this refers to research skills module. Yes, it does. So it sounds like a lot, but actually the research skills module, I believe, is uh, two training activities. So it's it sounds more than it is. Um, so it shouldn't be significant and it should be uh, aligned with the work that you're doing as part of the research project anyway. And sorry, Emma's got a hand up. So. Now, I was just going to back you up on that, Louise. And the yep. research project somebody said here about should it be assessed by the university by the end of year two? No, the research project you'll find will cross two years. One is the preparation for your research and the design, and then the other is the actual doing of the research and the writing up. So it's all in alignment with the um, academic national curriculum. So, yeah, you would be expected for your MSc project to be assessed and finished by the end of year three. OK, I think we've uh, just gone over by a minute, so hopefully we've been able to answer your questions today. Um, obviously, if you do have any further questions, there will be more information coming out. We're going to comprehensively communicate with you about this process and the guidance that's going to be available and all of that will be on the website. We're probably looking at uh, communicating with you towards the end of November. So have a uh, keep an eye out for a communication then. And then there will be information in the monthly memos as well. But obviously, if anybody's got any questions about the, the process or the, the strategy that we've just put through uh, today, you can always contact us and we will be happy to answer any questions. Louise, can I just jump in? Sorry to you can. Uh, jump just, in. just to, to also say, in addition, to these explainer webinars, which are themed. So this one's about progression and then the future ones, um, if you look at the series, are, are about different aspects of work-based assessment. We've also, um, if you look at the website and it's mentioned in the monthly memo, we've got a series of monthly drop-ins, which are just um, uh, sessions where senior members of the school will be available to answer your questions. So look also for the drop in sessions. If there's a question we haven't been able to answer today and you want to bring it to us, we've set these up so that there's that opportunity. So um, please take advantage of that if you still have some other questions um, as we go through the next few months, because there's, there's a lot of information to get your heads around. We fully appreciate that. So we're trying to be as comprehensive as possible to give you both op multiple opportunities to receive the communication and multiple opportunities to ask us about it. OK, well, I think we just say thank you for everybody's time today and apologies we've gone over by a couple of minutes. We really hope you found this helpful and please do engage with all those other communications opportunities that Stuart's just described for you if you've got any questions. Uh, but hopefully you found that useful. So we'll finish there, I think, Stuart. And, uh,